Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar fan commentary track. This one's going to be for Book 2 Earth Episode 4, The Swamp. So continue to suggest other episodes from both Avatar and Korra for me to do in future Avatar commentary track videos. But to sync up your copy of the episode with this video, have your copy of the episode ready to go at the start of the episode, including the introduction. Um, whether that be from the DVD, the Blu-ray, or Netflix, or whatever, have that ready to start. I'm going to finish up the intro in just a bit, and then there'll be about a 10 seconds of uh, pause with no audio. And when I start speaking again after that pause, that's when I'm going to hit play, that's when you should hit play, and we should be synced up after that point. So, bringing the introduction of the video to an end... When I start speaking again after the pause that's coming up just now, that's when you should hit play. Okay, so here we are with uh, 204, The Swamp. Again, an episode I really enjoy. Like, overall, is it one of the absolute best episodes of the series? You know, perhaps not. But it definitely plays its role of being one of these great, like, early episodes in book two that kind of does kind of important things on both sides of the story. We see sort of like the, the return of the blue spirit in the Zuko side of the story. And then some very interesting stuff with the swamp. On the outside, this episode can sort of seem like, is this book two's version of the Great Divide? But the swamp ends up being very, very interesting in that I think they, they get it a little bit more right by treating the swamp and the people who live there as being kind of more interesting from a world building point of view. In terms of like eventually revealing that, ah, Foggy Swamp Tribe, it's a, they're waterbenders. That's interesting. How did that happen? Why is there like an extra water tribe in the middle of this giant swamp? The swamp becoming this very important spiritual place within the world and so on. Leading to some great wisdom. The mask cart that just went by there, you could see had the blue spirit mask highlighting where Zuko got it from. And also, we later learn of course that the mask is from the play Love Amongst the Dragons. So it would sort of make sense why it's sort of a popular mask within um, the world. Not just the Fire Nation, but the world. Of course, they know about the play. So that's why there are there's multiple versions of the mask, in a way. So, yeah. Iroh, you know, you can see here, despite being this general, you know, uh, the Dragon of the West, this amazingly ca uh, powerful and wise man, he has no problem just you know, playing this role here on the street of, you know, kind of having to beg, perform for money and so on. He just ac accepts that this is the role at this point in time, where Zuko can't. His pride he means he can't do that, whereas Iroh doesn't let that get in the way. Because he's humble, I suppose. And this is a, a kind of fairly simple story in that we don't really cut back to this one. I think it's pretty much just this in the end scene uh, with this guy. But it's so well done of just Iroh has no problem really with what's going on here and accepts that he earned them some money by just doing this. He doesn't take this as this massive insult, but Zuko does because he still feels that like no one should do that to us he's still really buying into that idea like he is still the prince and that is still the thing that he wants to do whereas Iroh is so far beyond that he's you know, royalty as well but like he doesn't see it that way and then on this side of the story it's so interesting and mysterious there's so many questions that you kind of still have about this that even Korra didn't tackle of just like the swamp is actually alive because right at the end of the episode they reveal that like oh like oh most of the stuff going on was the the swamp benders but actually the swamp seemingly can move on its own and because it's so spiritual there's an element of it has control over its sort of weather system in a way and like this sudden like tornado or whatever that drags them down it's it's very interesting just the idea that ang is being drawn to this and then each of the characters have a kind of important vision that um, relates to what they're dealing with. And I think that works so well of like, um, 
one is more in the present, one is more about the future, and one is more about the past. And I think that works so nicely to, to get everything across so well. And yeah, just random tornado. And it's like, that's not just the uh, the weather. There's no way a tornado just suddenly appeared like that and is that aggressive. This is the swamp, like, knowing they need to come in here. And I like that. Like, this is one of those things where, like, we really don't have an answer for this exactly. Just that, in a way, like, the swamp sort of knows when it's needed. And knows what to show someone. But, yeah. There they are, driven into the swamp. And just floating down. That's pretty nice. They never forget that sort of stuff. Like, an airbender can break their fall. But they're separated from the animals. Which creates an interesting idea for like a, a plot involving like Appa and Momo escaping from the swamp vendors. You have an elbow leech. Where is it? <laughs> like Ang just immediately swinging around on the, the vine there. And yeah, the tornado disappears the second it puts them in the swamp. That isn't strange at all. <laughs> Poor Alba. He's so badly tied up. And yep, yeah, showing the friendship between the two. Momo just snapping them all for him. I like that they just give them this kind of plot on their own. And Oppa does it again. <laughs> Not Oppa's environment exactly. And yeah, like, I kind of can already sense that, like, there's something special about this place. It's kind of alive. Can we, can we stop breaking everything? <laughs> And, like, it is alive, of course, you know, it is plants, trees, and stuff like that, but in more of a spiritual sense as well. And here we go. What is this mysterious monster? There's a little bit of a slight horror theme to this as well that comes in. And they do that a lot with water bending. actually. It's, it's kind of interesting. You've got, like, the Puppet Master with, like, blood bending, and you've got also this of, like, the initial introduction of the Swamp Benders as being this kind of, like, Swamp Monster style thing. <laughs> That's just really nice. Off his tail, knocking Momo out. Swamp gas. <laughs> oh, yeah, like th this thing comes back at the end of the episode, and even the swamp is annoyed by it, and so the swamp seemingly like takes it out. Yeah, and, and this makes sense for Sokka, you know, he, he's he's more involved in these things, like spirit world stuff, but he still is sceptical of it, and that's pretty consistent with his character. Yeah, and then just kind of all this weird stuff just starts happening. And I like that in the Avatar world, you can do that, you can do this, you can ha you can set up the idea that this place is spiritual, and so truly weird stuff can actually just happen like i said like it's one of those episodes that like minute to minute is it the it's not the most you know it's not the strongest episode but it's it's still like enjoyable it's, it's an interesting place in terms of like why were they brought here because that's clearly the impression that you get and then you want to see what is zuko going to do about that guy who in his mind deeply insulted his uncle even though iroh has no issue with it and yeah, here we go, the swamp separating them for some reason. I just saw, I, I love the, the dynamic here, just takes the time, sets everyone up, and then just pulls them all apart at the same time.
And it's cool getting to see Sokka be able to just use that kind of knife to his advantage and just, you know, cut everything apart. Katara's waterbending, this is an important dynamic within the episode of, like, basically her fighting other waterbenders of a different style. And her really, you know, showing this great dynamic and ability to counter this. While also learning kind of along the way. Like, the fact that she encounters the Foggy Swamp uh, tribe here that adds to her knowledge base of she already sort of knows like northern style she's self-thought in some degree now she gets this she later learns from Hama some of the southern style stuff and so she's a very complete waterbender because she knows a bit of everything plus healing of course and yeah here we go ah doing though the song, you know, when it comes on, set my lines by the riverbed. And yeah, just like, yeah, giant thing, but yeah. Not quite what Appa wants. Yeah, and so they're all separated so they can all have separate visions. And this one's very sad. Because we know Katara's mother is important to her, Kaya, but um, they don't bring it up into the forefront as much as you think. And so it's just an idea of like, Katara's one is about the past, what happened like many, many years ago. And just bringing that, like that's what's on her mind, is just wanting her mother. And that continues all the way up until 316. That's the thing that she's kind of dealing with the most as we kind of go forward. And then with Sokka, it's more about like the immediate past or more or less the present. He's still dealing with what happened here with Yue. He was tasked to protect her, but couldn't. And he blames himself for it, even though Yue made the choice herself. He still beats himself up about it. And even though he knows she's still sort of like you know, out there like as the moon spirit. This is what he thinks she thinks of him. You like you you couldn't save me, you didn't save me. You failed. And yeah, Angs is about the future. So when he will meet the tears of swamp and the kind of crest of the Bei Fong family with the flying boar. That like he's he's immediately going to start looking for his earthbending teacher. It's not Boomy, so we have to set up who it is going to be. And why not someone like this? And here we go, the big encounter. A limu. <laughs> it's interesting that like the, the water tribe can have such a completely different culture than both the southern and the northern water tribe. But obviously it's one of these interesting things where this tribe obviously formed in a way from the same thing that led to the southern tribe forming. Like it all came from the north and as they were going down to the south you know obviously some people settled in the Earth Kingdom, in this swamp, a uh, more watery environment within the, not near the poles. So it, it makes sense and it's, it's, it's great world building that like the Water Tribe isn't such a sort of like extreme culture that it has to be right there next to, in the environments where there's snow like all the time. In the same way that like ultimately like a lot of the fire islands are sort of volcanic but not all of them are so it, it like the place you're from doesn't have to be in like inherently like directly related to the element but yeah i love how like they're all drawn apart at like the same time and they all just like smash into each other at the same time T 
tea party. <laughs> and Katara's like honest about what she thought she saw. And Sokka isn't. Even though his is the one that probably in a way like. It's like the most present. It's the most. It's the thing that happened like the most clearest. And he, he kind of sort of reveals it. But like he's like no no no. And they're kind of like okay. Like these are things that are on our mind. Doesn't explain Aang's one though. So it must be something to do with the swamp. And here we go, the banyan grove tree. The heart of the swamp. It's been calling them. Nothing magical. And here we go. Hugh. As his giant swamp monster. It's a really cool design. And the idea of like this being a form of water bending of or, like um in the swamp where it's not particularly like I suppose cold as such they use it to control the plants because that's their environment whereas I suppose the northern and southern style is more about like turning water into ice and using that into play but different environment here use what you have and it's, it's an interesting style it's a, it's a little bit more sort of like physical sort of hand-to-hand -hand touching things and you see the immediate contrast between that and what Katara is able to do here. She more like directly uses the water, whereas they use the water like within things, and it kind of opens her mind to some of those kind of possibilities. She does some really impressive stuff here for sure. But still, it's this crazy like monstrosity thing that they don't know what it is yet, and how do you fight something like this? Of course they're going to be taken by surprise. And immediately cut back to this, the river chase. The music fits perfectly. And again, just the style of waterbending we're seeing here. They're blatantly waterbending. But it's like, very like, aggressive with the, the movements here. Like the, the rotations. Like they must have incredibly strong shoulders here. But yeah, they, they end up capturing uh, Momo. I think that there's definitely room for, I think, a few more stories involving the, sw the Foggy Swamp tribe. It's obviously, it's obviously like, how exactly do you bring them into other stories? But I think there's definitely room for something. And then here we go. Like, this is, this is the sort of thing you don't really see the Foggy Swamp tribe do use like ice as such and it's actually quite effective here they could make a hole straight through it but he just creates more kind of vines and because they're in like this kind of watery environment like you can have the characters get flung away like that but they just kind of fall into water miles away there's the first you know, tease of like, oh, it's someone inside. If the other members of that live in the swamp, you know, can can water bend, then he's doing it as well. And yeah, the mask broken. And here we go, Hugh. So they're like, oh, like you were called by the swamp as well, so we can talk now. That like Hugh's enlightened by the swamp. So he's like, oh, you're oh you're the avatar. Okay, like, like, let's let's have a talk here. Protect the swamp from yeah people who want to ruin it. As I suppose technology is advancing. It is mystical. Enlightenment is, is it's such an interesting thing of like what 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 exactly does he mean by that? Does he just mean that he's spiritual? Connected? And that's the cool thing about this. 
the whole swamp is this one tree. That's how big it is. It's all connected. Even though it's this giant swamp. Like the whole world. And there's some nice wisdom here. Different wisdom. But this is actually some of the stuff I really remember. It's just the idea of like use that connection. That line is great. We all have the same roots and we're all branches of the same tree. That's like definitely one of the main kind of like pearls of wisdom that really I think comes out of this, this show quite strongly. Yeah, and like the fact that they were reminded of these things isn't like meant to be cruel, but it signals that they're still alive within you through remembering them. Time is an illusion and so is death. And yeah, this is pretty cool. They come back to this in Korra. So if it's a spiritual place and he's the avatar, make the connection. From the center of the swamp, you should be able to sense everything that's happening. And so this is where Appa is. This is where Momo is. Appa's being taken. There it is, the song. The Cat Gators. Some wild movements there from the guys in the boat. And yeah, Katara just comes in and is just like, Yeah, I'm a better combat waterbender than you are. And then they're like, wait, we're all waterbenders here. Let's talk about this. They're like, uh, okay. <laughs> and they know Hugh, of course. And they're like, that's your name. <laughs> but it's pretty good. Possum chicken. And like they use them as pets, but they're like, no, a crazy animal like Appa, that, that's something you want to eat. And they don't know about the, the South Pole, the Southern Tribe. And they, yeah, they're like, no, that, we wouldn't like that at all. Interesting. Sokka still doesn't believe it. We're eating giant bugs. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. The Avatar stuff is real. What about the tornado? He's like, what tornado? Nothing mysterious about the swamp, and then the screaming bird comes over. I went, no one around seemingly, the swamp just takes care of it. And yeah, back here, the guy with the sword who was asking Iroh to dance. And look who it is someone taking those swords. The blue spirit is back. So we know where he got the mask from, now he's got the swords, it's all there. The blue spirit is back and it's it's this, it's, it's meant to I suppose represent this idea of like, this is Zuko undercover performing his mission. The, you know, it, it's meant to represent that real, him jumping like knee deep into that sort of 
constant failure persona because that's what the blue spirit sort of represents within the story of love amongst the dragons it's the villain of or basically who's always defeated and so it's kind of symbolic of zuko who feels like he always loses azul is the one who always wins and thrives and he has to kind of scrounge from the bottom and so you know if he can't publicly do all this stuff he's going to do it as the blue spirit and that's why it's very important that like Iroh basically confronts Zuko later about this primarily that you know they've been banished basically from the Fire Nation at this point they're on the run from the Fire Nation and the Earth Kingdom the Blue Spirit is Zuko's way to sort of do stuff that you know (laughs) reminds him keeps them back on track about his his goal to, to capture the Avatar become the prince again and so on but uh, and, uh, and of course, when he realizes Aang comes back into play, try and capture Aang again. But Iroh, of course, sets it straight of just like, like basically Zuko in the Blue Spear persona is usually when Zuko does the stuff that is the most risky, that this lens to which he will go to fulfill his mission as the Blue Spirit is meant to represent basically how crazy it is that this is what he defines his destiny as being and, and and i've always liked that about the the blue spirit persona of it it being this thing that is kind of zuko in a way like at his most comfortable because he doesn't really use the fire bending as the blue spirit it's him with the stuff that he is like truly skilled at which actually ends up being the use of those double swords and um kind of you know stealth sneaking around and stuff like that um it's this like he was always uh, criticized growing up for not being as good of a firebender as as Azula but one thing he's kind of always sort of had a talent for is I suppose a skill with the blades um which again he I suppose he sort of got that idea from Iroh as we learned by when Iroh sent him that knife and and so on so you know pr- pretty cool stuff of like how it all sort of connects together and um, yeah it's, it's just one of those episodes where is it the most important one no but I like the the wisdom of Hugh, the idea of like another guru like character almost, but from a very different, you know, culture. He's not the same type of wise character as Iroh. He's not the same type of wise character as Patik. And he lives in this swamp and he's connected to nature and it's that view of things. Nature's reflecting the the real world and so on and um, like I said, the whole we're all branches of the same tree is a fantastic line that is really, really good wisdom and the, just the, the advice he gives them about like, you know, what you saw, like it's because it's important to you, but it also signifies that they're not gone because you still remember them. And like in, in the case of UA, she's still alive, just in a different form. And then the tease of like, hmm, it's the Avatar. Might it mean the future? Um, someone I will meet? Um, it, it, it all works, I think, together pretty nicely. But um, yeah, that's been my discussion here on The Swamp. Like I said, continue to suggest other episodes for me to do in the future. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.